This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Let's be upfront about the upfronts, or not. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Normally, this time of year, we would be covering Network Upfronts, an event held for the press and advertisers teasing new shows for the upcoming fall TV season with the hopes that they can sell ad spots up front. Coronavirus ran a freight train through that process. Restrictions kicked in just as studios were working on pilots, so there's little or nothing to show. And even if there was, you can't bring people together to show it to them. So we're left with plans for pilots, with no certainty as to when or if they will be made, and if so, when resulting series will be produced or broadcast. Keep in mind that most of these series will never see the light of day, virus or not. On CBS, we have Clarice, a drama which is a sequel to The Silence of the Lambs, following Clarice Starling's story. Produced by Alex Kurtzman of Alias, Fringe, Star Trek, and the Hawaii Five-0 reboot, so it went straight to series. A guarantee that the show will actually see the light of day if there is such a thing anymore. The Lincoln Lawyer, also a drama, based on the novels and Matthew McConaughey film about an idealist attorney who runs his business out of his town car. Produced by David E. Kelly, so again, it's going straight to series. Ways and Means, a drama. Patrick Dempsey returns to TV as a disillusioned congressman that winds up working with an idealistic young congresswoman, Troyan Belisario from Pretty Little Liars, essentially playing AOC, and to save politics. The Equalizer, drama, yet another TV reboot, this time of the Edward Woodward P.I. slash Vigilante series from the late 80s. Queen Latifah steps into the main role. Then we have Good Sam, a drama. Sophia Bush, One Tree Hill, and Chicago PD is a maverick surgeon forced into a leadership role at a hospital after her boss, Jason Isaacs from Harry Potter and Star Trek Discovery, falls into a coma. Now her boss wakes up and is forced to work for her. Oh, did I mention he's her dad? Boing! What a load of malarkey. <laughs> the Three of Us, a comedy. Oliver Hudson from Rules of Engagement and Malin Ackerman from Watchmen and Billions are siblings whose other sibling is divorced, so they all live together. Ghosts, a comedy. Rose McIver from iZombie stars as half of a young couple who inherit a country house already inhabited by poltergeists. Untitled Kingsbury Daily Goldstein Project, a comedy. Now, with a title like this, don't hold your breath that it will actually reach fruition. When a young couple's careers kick into high, they need someone to care for their son. So the wife's mom, Elizabeth Hurley, moves in. Turns out she needs more raising than the kid. Raised by Wolves, also a comedy, Julia, Julie Bowen, Comes straight off her long run on Modern Family, with Ed and Boston Legal before that, a run of 20 years in regular TV roles. The producers of Will and Grace bring you a tale of a business crisis manager, Bowen, forced to adopt a niece after her neurotic sister can't handle it. This is Bowen's first multi-camera show. Be Positive, a comedy. Chuck Lorre cranks out another multi-cam sitcom. Anna Ashford from Broadway's Wicked, Legally Blonde, and Kinky Boots, and Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley, star. He's in need of a kidney, and she's a woman from his past who donates it. Wackiness ensues. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> uh, United States of... Al. Al? Yeah, I think so. Or, or AI. It may be an AI. <laughs> yeah. <don't> know. <laughs> Chuck Lorre's second pilot with Parker Young from Suburgatory and Adhir Kalin from Rules of Engagement, co-starring as an ex-Marine and an Afghan interpreter who strike up a friendship in Ohio. This is the second sitcom from Lorre involving different cu- cultures after Bob Hart's Abishola. Fun comedy. Becky Newton and Michael Urry, both from Ugly Betty, star as brother and sister who reunite when their family's struggling funeral home needs to be saved. Hmm. Fun. You're old. <laughs> oh, dear. On ABC, we see 30-something else, 
a drama straight to series, a reboot of the classic 80s series with many of the leads returning, Mel Harris, Ken Olin, Timothy Busfield, and Patricia Wedding, now mostly dealing with their adult kids. Triage, a drama, a medical drama about a surgeon covering three decades at the same hospital. Yeah, that's a high concept. Those don't usually don't work. Harlem's Kitchen, a drama starring uh, Delroy Lindo, Malcolm X, and The Good Fight, and Cheryl Lee Ralph from Weisha and Instant Mom, who co-star as co-owners of a Harlem restaurant in an ensemble show. The Brides, a drama. Greg Berlanti, virtually every CW show, adds more to his plate in a feminist retelling of Dracula. Basically, a vampire soap with three female leads. Gina Torres, Firefly, Suits, and Garan Viginic, ER and Timeless, Star. In Wreckage, it's a drama. Survivors of a plane crash become media sensation. But there is a big secret. How many times can they remake Lost? <laughs> Apparently more. Rebel, a drama inspired and produced by Aaron Brockovich. We follow a thinly disguised version of her today with Katie Seagal, Married with Children, Futurama, Sons of Anarchy, and John Corbett, Northern Exposure, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, co-starring the Big Sky, a drama that is direct to series from David E. Kelly, who presents a procedural thriller set in Montana. Ryan Filippi from I Know What You Did Last Summer and Cruel Intentions is a PI who teams with an ex-cop, Kylie Bunbury of When They See Us. Prospect, a comedy. A young woman moves to the Old West frontier to be a school teacher, only to find out her students are ranch hands. I'm betting this one won't make it based on the minimal info actually available about it. Home Economics, a comedy. Topher Grace stars as one of three siblings in different economic straits. Untitled Kapnick Holland Project, a comedy. A love story, with a twist, where a teenager in New York learns a family secret. Again, when you see Untitled Blah 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 Project, mm. Mm. Work Wife, a comedy, partially based on the lives of producers Kelly Ripa and Ryan Seacrest, who try to balance a professional relationship and a friendship. In this case, the profession is real estate. Their star power got this a pilot slot, but such shows rarely work. Adopted, a comedy. A Green Beret returns to Texas and now has to deal with an adopted 12-year-old Russian boy, produced by Jimmy Kimmel and inspired by a true story. Hmm. Mm. My Village. It's a comedy. Kira Sedgwick returns to TV as a mom who finds herself far away from her family and decides to do something about it, returning into their lives. Carrie Leeser, The New Adventures of Old Christine, produces this series. Kids Matter Now, a comedy. A boss who doesn't like working parents changes their tune when they adopt a baby. Lots of adoptions going on yeah, here. Yeah, it seems to be. Valley Trash, a comedy. Jason Lee from My Name is Earl returns to TV as the head of a blue-collar family whose daughter gets accepted into a prestigious L.A. private school. Then moving over to NBC. Langdon, a drama, an adaptation of Dan Brown's thriller The Lost Symbol, and it will be produced by Ron Howard. Won't last. <laughs> Ordinary Joe, a drama. James Wolfe from Watchmen and the Crazy Ones stars in a sliding door series about how a decision made at a crossroads of a man's life changes based on love, loyalty, or passion. <laughs> Debris, a drama. Two international agents work together to investigate the wreckage of a destroyed alien craft and how it affects mankind. Echo, a drama. An investigative team goes all quantum leap, solving crimes by jumping back into the body of the victim. Reed Scott, a veep, stars. At that age, drama. A family is torn apart after their golden child has a catastrophic event, changing all of their lives, paging This Is Us. La Brea, a drama. A massive sinkhole tears a family apart. I assume that means figuratively? We, yeah. Night School, a comedy based on the 2018 Kevin Hart film, which I don't remember, about adults in a GED prep class. Hart is a producer, but it's unlikely he would be on screen. Doesn't that remind you of the one where they were just on last season that was horrible and yes. got canceled yep. where they were trying to learn and English? Was, and something? was also on NBC. Yeah. <laughs> they never learn. They never learn. American Auto, a comedy, a workplace comedy, set at a floundering Detroit car company with Anna Gasteyer from SNL starring. 
Crazy for You, a comedy, a Lauren Michaels produced sitcom about a woman rejoining the dating game after many years, paging the unicorn. They could have a crossover. Yeah. <laughs> Resolve both series. <laughs> Somewhere out there a comedy. Two adults are forced to become the best versions of themselves in this romantic comedy. Untitled Tina Fey, Robert Carlock Project, comedy direct -a series so you can get that untitled role. Ted Danson. Oh. So, yeah, you can really forget it if yeah. it's Ted Danson. Ted Danson returns to TV after The Good Place and Cheers and Becker and CSI. Now he's a wealthy businessman who runs for L.A. mayor. Holly Hunter, Broadcast News, Saving Grace, The Incredibles, and Bobby Moynihan, SNL co-star. So even if it's horrible, it'll be on for a little while. Yeah, I would I would think. <laughs> well, Becker wasn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffries, a comedy, another in a long line of stand-ups given a sitcom based on their lives, this time with Jim Jeffries. Untitled Jackson and Gore comedy, an ensemble show about black friends dating and wine. Uh, That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Young Rock, a comedy series that's going straight to series. It's based on Dwayne Johnson's early life with Johnson appearing in each episode. Moving over to Fox, and we start with The Cleaning Lady, a drama based on an Argentinian series about a doctor who comes to the U.S. to save her dying son, only to have the system send her into hiding. The Big Leap, a drama based on a U.K. series about second chances and chasing dreams, starring Terry Polo of Meet the Parents and Matt Lucas of Little Britain and Doctor Who. Blood Relative, a, a drama. Genetics is the main tool in this forensic procedural with an irascible lead. Melissa Leo, Homicide, The Fighter, and Tate Donovan, Damages, and The O.C. star. Untitled Film Reenactment Project. Hmm, a drama. <laughs> Heavyweight producers Gail Berman and Richard Donner bring you a tale of a big city woman with a secret returning as a failure to her small town to teach. Call Me Cat, a comedy based on a UK series about a 39-year-old woman who wants to prove to her mother that you can still have everything and be happy. This is the return of Mayim Bialik, Blossom, and the Big Bang Theory with Swoozie Kurtz as the mom. Bialik's former performing partner, Jim Parsons, is a producer. Now, Fox doesn't have a great record with live-action comedies lately, so I'm concerned. Otherwise, I would think this would be a hit. This Country, a comedy, yet another show based on a UK series, a faux documentary about young adults in a small town. Sean William Scott from American Pie Stars and Paul Feig is a co-producer. Housebroken, another comedy, and yet another animated series trying to recapture Fox's glory years. This one ordered direct series Family dysfunction in the suburbs, all seen through the eyes of neighborhood animals. Lisa Kudrow, Friends, Will Forte, Last Man on Earth, and Tony Hale, Veep, lead the voice cast. Pivoting, a comedy, three women lose their childhood friend and go all FOMO, making ill-advised decisions and screwing up their lives. And then, finally, on the CW, The Lost Boys, Drama, Rob Thomas brings us a reboot of the 1987 cult film about teenage vampires. If it wasn't Rob Thomas, I would have concerns about that. Yeah, but it's Rob Thomas, so there you go. Yeah. Maverick, a drama. Nothing to do with the James Garner series. This series follows the college-bound daughter of the president in an authoritarian society. She discovers a growing resistance there and has to decide where her loyalties lie. Kung Fu, a drama. Greg Berlanti, the energizer bunny of Uber producers, brings us a reboot of the 70s series with a woman in the lead, Olivia Liang. The Republic of Sarah, a drama. When a high school teacher sees a greedy mining company about to destroy her small town, she finds a way for the town to declare independence from the U.S. Now she's got to run the place. Superman and Lois, drama, direct to series. Berlanti's Arrowverse grows again, this time with our favorite married reporters at the Daily Planet. I have to say, from what I've seen, Tyler Hoechlin and Elizabeth Tulloch have about the same level of chemistry as a ball of twine. Acting may be their kryptonite. Walker, drama, straight to series. Now that Jared Padlecki's Sam Winchester finally gets to collect Social Security, he's assuming the Chuck Norris role from the 80s Texas action series. The Arrow spinoff, a.k.a. Not the Birds of Prey, drama. Already teased via that backdoor pilot, Oliver's daughter Mia fights crime in the 2040s, along with two former Black Canaries, now in the future via TV Logic. We were not impressed. Untitled The 100 prequel, a drama that about explains it all. <laughs> 
I don't think very many of these will actually make no, it to I, air. Again, these are all, a lot of these are just concepts. concepts. Oh, they're probably not even scripts. Yeah, <laughs> and and who knows. If there will even be a fall season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we may be seeing a lot of um, TV shows made from from Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, every, every, every TV writer is currently putting together a treatment for a Zoom comedy. There's no question. Yes. Dozens and dozens of those that are being written as we speak. <laughs> okay, maybe we should have a Zoom session. But in the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker... I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Does Greg Berlani actually sleep?